Um, we always get a small break, and I know it doesn't seem like you guys get any break whatsoever when we do this, but uh, lots of things happen, you know, in the break. Uh, we get orientated ourselves. But um, right up now here on the board, which is possible for you for us to get a little bit of a look at this, Roger's just bringing up some blood on the screen there, and if we can get a bit of a focus for our viewers uh, that are viewing our show today with the universe of Saturday Mind, uh, we're looking at some blood, Roger, and, uh, and it looks like, you know, these blood cells are fairly discreet and things are sort of flowing. Um, when you get a look at the overall picture of everything, you can get an idea where the blood is flowing and it's nice and discreet. But what are some other things that you might like to point out here that you're looking at, we're looking at? Yeah, as you can see here, there's the red, red blood cells. Red blood corpuscles, right? Yes. They're a corpuscle because they actually really are a conglomeration, aren't they? But there's no DNA in there. Um, and then um, we can see, um, if that's okay, um, that um, we have a beautiful glow. Healthy blood, actually, that uh, Roger sees, uh, and Magnoff and uh, other microscopists has a very amazing, beautiful corona around it. And um, when the blood is healthy, it really ha this corona is really uh, quite beautiful. Um, the, uh, the more unhealthy the blood comes to be, the darker and the less the corona is that's around it. Uh, this corona happens to be made up out of monatomic element. Uh, which creates a superconductive state. Uh, and this red blood corpuscle is really in a beautiful shape, which allows it to have an anti gravity property. Um, and when it goes through the percussion of the heart and the vortexes that occur within the heart's percussion, uh, it becomes energised and it starts to pulse more with light. And it actually pulsates. Um, and then once it becomes spent, the difference between blood, which is really uh, energised with the oxygen and, uh, and com 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 compression uh, and vortex of the heart's uh, little tornado effects like it has within itself, energises the red blood corpuscle. And long before a heart is formed, um, the red blood corpuscles are flowing and uh, there's a pressure and electrical uh, and temperature differentials, which is, explains uh, the nature of how blood flows. And the heart really is like a pump, basically, but blood is a lot more than just a um, gas transporter. It happens to be made up out of double spores. When we look deeper in, with the great more sophisticated microscopic work, we could discover that the red blood corpuscle, which has got no DNA in it itself, but if it's left to be still somewhere, it is being shown to be able for nucleic acids to arise inside of this and uh, nucleus and nucleic material and chromosomes and things to form from the building blocks of the double spore. Um, but anyway, um, these red blood corpuscles actually are made in the large cell lamina propria of the intestinal mucosa, uh, primarily, but they can be reverse differentiated from fat cells and this sort of thing. This is a brand new insight into colloidal biology. Um, we can often see sort of how clean things are and what forms here, and if sometimes there could be extrusions, or we could see that in the membrane of our cell, where essential fatty acids are less than present, we can see pinchedness in the membrane and things uh, of the red blood corpuscle, and we can see slow oxidation of the, the, uh, the double spore as it, it fuses, it aggregates with other double spore and starts to, of itself, uh, become mucorasmosis, since this is an organism which creates vascularization of our body, or Aspergillus niger, which is the primary organism which uh, we live symbiotically with uh, and pleomorphically, is the organism which assists to make our bones and our muscle and things. So, um, 
it's amazing for us because we can look at the uh, blood and we can determine a lot of things that's going on. Uh, and we can read the blood and we could learn how to read the body like a book, just as sort of as we could look at this a picture, it's possible for us to see a whole living person and do an analysis of everything as a, on the basis of this. So, um, is there anything you'd love to add at this point? Or is there any questions that we have? Where we are? <coughs> Just interesting. This way of analyzing. This is Dr. David Chubb. This is the universe inside our mind. Stay tuned for some more exciting information.